they don't continue. 2024 is just one and a half years. If they are not able to complete, I don't think the community will say something good to them because they will tell them that we were told that you were doing this for by election. Prove to us. I say no for Lancaster. No, I will have a sabbatical year, baby. Next year, be a original. Oh, when you are so busy, you are doing this. I don't know. Next year, next year, I do a baby. No, the sun can't see no. No, a gem go. Governments oftentimes do not see to the completion of their projects it's because they were not rewarded in terms of votes. We hope you will be able to see to the completion of the projects. That's why I am here. We are hopeful they would continue. We may have lost the elections, but they would continue. Absolutely, this one, um, everything has ended and then they don't have any other option than to continue because probably next year they will come soliciting for vote again. So if they continue this kind of project, that would prove to the people that this isn't for the vote, but rather for development. From the road to Asempanaye to Kushia, uh, this recently constructed road is already beginning to develop potholes. The earthen are uh, already becoming bare for some of the drivers who are plying the road. It's not really a busy road and so for it to begin to show according to residents is concerning. But they tell us that the contractors per interactions with them have revealed that they've packed the machinery aside to make way for the by-elections in the constituency after which they would return and a second coating will be laid on this particular stretch of the road. Eric Mawinaigbeta, TV. This is a confederate, a confederate polling station. While the voting is going on, road is being constructed live. Very interesting. What a country. This is very sad. Oh my goodness. Well, those were uh, sights and sounds from the Asin North constituency. And um, while voting was ongoing, roads were being constructed. Well, as of yesterday, the machines, the constituency, the machines were tired and that they were resting. Uh, the machines were tired and that they were resting. Helen, hmm. the, the sentiments of the people as have been expressed are that, well, we want the roads constructed yeah. uh, or completed, if you will, um, because we were told that it was not for the sake of the by-elections, but it was because we wanted to actually develop the, the place. Now the machines have been halted. Uh, do you see Ajana 1, Ajana 2? I think ultimately um, it's in the best interest. <laughs> in the best interest of who? Abolin. Free FM Sunrise. Are you are you are you <laughs> I apo let, are let, you me let me apologize. Let me apologize. Um in the because, last clip we saw yeah. as voting was ongoing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> mm. 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 I'm told that mm. prior to the election when the VAs started trooping in, you would hear them come with a siren. Mm -hmm. When the elections were done and the result had been declared, everybody knew their smoothness level. The viewers were leaving silently without the siren. Without the whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't whoa, want whoa, any whoa. announcement of your departure. You leave quietly. But you know that in every election, the, the electorate who are the constituents, they listen to the campaigns. And uh, while the former general secretary of the NPP, John Boydou, rubbished claims that there was vote buying that had gone on. The 
people on the ground who had cast their votes were jubilating. They said, well, they received various sums of money. Um, first, let's listen to John Boydou dismissing the claims that monies were shared. Listen to him. Well, that, that, that's I'm saying the fertilizer, the uh, 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 machete and things they were sharing, what was it about? I think that we've moved on from this pettiness in our politics. You understand? What was it about? They've been sharing things all over the place and they'll turn around and come and complain. As I stand here, if somebody comes from Fosu, I came from Fosu this morning, about 20 people came to me that they want to come and vote. Wouldn't I give them transportation to come? What is all these things? We waste our time. They do it. They do it. Oh, you did it. We also did it. I don't have time for some of these things. They were sharing things all over the place. Didn't you? Haven't you seen samples of it? What is this? Childishness. I don't think that uh, we can continue this kind of unnecessary debates. You give this, you give that. What is it? I went to a police station. I saw somebody who is my brother. And he may li likely not see me before I leave. So if I give him money, what, what is wrong? What is it about? Eh? Then they see they go and misbehave and just turn around, just want a debate. Oh, what kind of backwardness is that? We've moved on. Let's move on. Have you seen anybody sharing money to anybody yet? But we have to support our people to come and vote. Ah, I go to a place, they say, oh, I don't pay me in this shit. Did not come in Jano Hora me call. Sign a year, you know. And what was it called? Did not general? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 sir. You understand? Mm. You, you have to support people. Like if you meet Helen on the way, you support Helen mm. to go and vote. That's what John. I, I want to know. Was it like that all throughout when they, you know, all throughout their time in the <laughs> in the area? Did they start the sharing every time they were out campaigning? If somebody was hungry, were they, you know, dishing out monies willy nilly, or did that only happen at a very specific time? Said because San, uh, San Yeno oh. was asking us, is that that's not how it's done? Okay. Uh, that's in like you you see people, they tell you they are hungry, and you leave them. Mm. No, no, that's not how it's done. Um, but it didn't tell us where the monies were sourced from. We're not ready to have an honest conversation no, about this anytime Be soon. Because, we're not. Because we're dismissive about Very it. Very much so. Yeah. But I'll support you. I'll support you. Uh, with yeah. breakfast, Anna? No, I'll support you. Uh, yeah. Mm. I'll support you depending on... Here are the, um, the voters. Listen to them.
Fellow Ghanaians, as the French would say, l'argent n'aime pas le bruit, to wit, money does not like noise. Sika empe dede. Sir John was right. Fear delegates. Fear delegates. Fear delegates. We won't listen. Fear delegates. Fellow Ghanaians, as the French would say, l'argent n'aime pas le bruit. To wit, money does not like noise. Sika MP DD. Well, while we speak about the, the voters and what monies they took, we also do know that there were some impersonations here and there. Somebody uh, clothed in an olive green with a stint of camouflage. And then another person who was um, clothed in a fake police uniform. All of those things happened at Asin North. But in the end, it is the will of the people that uh, triumphed. And it's important that we recognize that you cannot, you cannot toy with the will of the people. You cannot continue to take the people for granted. And you will have to, at some point, yield to the people. Because when the people get to their, their, their wit's end, they will give you the shocker that you least expected. Mm. And that's what happened in Asin North. That's exactly right. D during the course of the week, we've looked at the um, what the two parties were standing on to campaign. We saw the MPP on the one hand tout some over 100 projects they say they had completed. Mm. Um, it would be interesting to know uh, the timelines of these various projects, mm -hmm. but let's park that. We also know that the NDC uh, stood on the grounds of the current economic climate to campaign. Mm. And I think it's something that the ruling party might be overlooking is really how harshly this economy is dealing with the citizens. Mm. I'm not sure if they have a full appreciation of how difficult, truly, truly difficult for certain demographics in this country things are. So if uh, I'm going through economic hardship and I see you hurriedly putting together projects when all throughout the things we've been complaining about, lamenting about have fallen by the wayside. I'll be looking also to my personal pocket. It's biting me. I feel it. And I think as for collecting the monies, immediately they need that cash. They'll collect it. Mm. But they're also projecting into the future. Do yeah. we want to mm. be subjected to these conditions uh, for a long time? People want to see a way out. In fact, one of the ladies said there that they are not hungry people mm. that they are wise mm. and that the monies that have been given to them cannot take care of them forever that's right 
but they just needed to collect the monies to teach the politicians a lesson that they are not hungry and it's it's a, it's a very so one actually this guy herself wore you know regular clothing went to collect the money voted and now went to change into you know her party's political clothing t-shirt and had a major jamboree yes so they made a fool out of the politicians literally they made a, a, a big fool out of the politicians they took them they, because the politicians took them for granted if you fail to take care of the grassroots, the grassroots will show you Pepe. Mm. That's what happened there. And it should be a lesson to, to all of us that if you look at the ages of the people in the video, predominantly they are young people. That's right. It only tells you that if the young people of this country wake up, and by waking up, I don't mean they should be violent or whatever it is, but waking up to let the leaders know that you are not treating us well. You are not doing the things that will make us comfortable. You are not putting in the right policies and enabling environment that will make us survive and thrive. You are just consistently tying us to your apron strings and giving us hand downs. If we make them know that, that's not what we want. We want you to fix the country so that we can also fend for ourselves. I think we'll be fine. I do hope, though, we'll that fine. the people who were bold enough to speak on camera are not... Um maybe victimized later on or mm. they don't have any uh, repercussions for coming out to speak about collecting monies and going uh, contrary to the purpose for which the money was given. Um, but I, I hope it's also a deterrence to the leaders and that they are watching that mm. you can give out as much money a, as you want, but right. the people are becoming more and more discerning as the days roll by. They are scrutinizing mm. the policies. They are saying the slogans. We've heard them time without number. They are analyzing the issues. People mm. want to know how your policy these ideas are going to affect their personal yeah. pockets. We are suffering. We are indeed suffering. Well, fellow Ghanaians, as the French would say, l'argent n'aime pas le bruit. To wit, money does not like noise. Sika impe dede. What shall I say? Oh, what you do? Oh, what you do? Oh, you What shall we say? We don't know. It's 15 minutes after 8. George Opariado is joining us on the phone line now. He is the National Youth Organizer of the National Democratic Congress. Pablo, good morning. Thank you for your time. Morning, Johnny. How are you doing? I am greater than Accra. Congratulations are in order, isn't it? Certainly, my brother. Now, let's go back to our sin north. Number one, we saw videos of your vehicle uh, having been attacked, the police have issued a statement suggesting that the incidents are being investigated. Where are we now? Uh, first of all, tell me, how were you attacked? Um, good morning to your viewers and listeners. I, I still didn't see the attack coming. Uh, we, we are just on our money accounts. We had gone to Brickle. When we got to Brickle, we saw a young man military regalia so we confronted him drew the attention of the police and he expected that because he was in the queue threatening voters we followed through to make sure he was taken to the police station so when we left the first police station we drove straight myself the former the national organizer chief Bailey, mm. and a few of my regional youth organizers my regional youth organizer for savannah and two of my deputies team regional youth organizers we all drove straight in four cars to ascend Faso to continue with our monitoring exercise. Faso had four pulling stations. When we got there, we went we went to the first three. It was peaceful, it was calm. Then we decided to do the last one, which was a bit off the road. That was the DA, the Roman Catholic pulling station or something. When we got there, there was some commotion between some NPP people and some young men who were coming to vote. We even ignored them because it was not at a polling station. We went ahead in our money train and then came to sit in our car. Just when we were about moving, Chivani's car was the lead car. And it had just entered onto the main road. Mm -hmm. My car was the last car. And then the Toyota case just drove in. So the, the car ahead of me stopped for it to enter. Okay. 
Where they got down, we saw about 15 able bodied young men coming out. I was on phone. All I could hear was, uh, where is the Pariado? Mm. I turned around to look around, but we were asking for Pariado. The good thing was that my windows were up. So I asked my driver to just drive away and ignore them. Then they walked towards my car. Apparently, I was, I was in the front seat, so they saw me. He said, I should come out of the car. So he tried opening the door. I ignored it. I asked the driver to drive off. But there was a pickup ahead of us. So the pickup tried moving. Before I could say Jack, he used a crowbar to hit the windshield. Mm. The other guy used his fist to hit my windows while I was dead. He tried it twice. It didn't work. Mm. He went back, picked the stone, hit it again, and then this time it broke. And then they used whatever they used for the back mm. windshield, I don't know. Okay. But when we left, we had, whether it was a gunshot or there was a bank, I don't know, but there was a loud sound. Whether I, and I'm saying, I can't independently say it was a gunshot. Because right. I didn't see any of them carry a gun when they got out of the car. Okay. But later on, my agent informs me that I'm sure what I heard when I was leaving the police station was a gunshot. I didn't see the gun, so mm. I cannot attest to the fact. Right. Mm. But from what my agent tells me, he was even used the part of the gun to hit the head of one of our young men there. Mm. And that's he's currently in the hospital. And there are videos of him already on social media. So that is what happened. So we went straight to the police station, mm. lodged a complaint, mm. reported, and then the police quickly detailed the team there. And then sanity was restored back. The police say they are investigating. Uh, have you been contacted for these investigations? Where I was made. I was made to write a statement. So, and uh, you know, on that day after the victory, and as of yesterday, nobody had reached out to me again. But I must say that the IGP himself spoke to me. The director of operations. Suraj or something also mm, spoke to me. Mm. But with all the leaders, they, they gave me, put the police also made sure I attended their clinic, their medical clinic, the van, to make sure I was okay and everything. Mm. Let me commend Dan Parry and his police force. Right. Fantastic job they did in Assay mm. North. What exactly? Every what exactly? Every assurance they gave us during our meeting with them on Monday was implemented. And the kind of professionalism that was exhibited on the ground. If we are going to go into 2024 with those same arrangements, then I can assure you, Johnny, that it's going to be a peaceful process. Are but you are everywhere you, we went to? Mm. There were at least seven or eight policemen, and in between polling stations, you see vehicles parked. There were no weapons at polling stations. Like we saw in Tichiman South and leading to the death of eight individuals. There were no weapons at police stations. But within reasonable distances of the police station, you could see police backups properly geared, ready to be deployed to call any unfortunate situation. Like in mm. Praso. When we got to the police station and reported, between Brickway and Praso is about five minutes. Immediately we got there and reported, within 10-15 minutes, they are taking total control of the Prasso area. So if the police are not done so, it doesn't get very volatile. When the NDC young men are aware that I've been attacked, you can understand how they also got agitated. But quickly the police came in and we assured them that the police are moving, so there was no need for any reprisal attacks. If they do this into 2024, then I'll show you what it's all process. Were there any arrests at the the place because of your, your your vehicles vandalized and all of that? The police moved in swiftly. Did they pick no, up it, anybody? It, it, when when we left, apparently the young men also drove off. They, they drove off. I had I had to drove towards the Kumasi side. You know, in between, right from Prasa. Right, right. Santa. That's right. That's correct. They headed towards the near the BRC area. They did not come back. You know, the police mounted road checks. So we gave out the car numbers and what have you, but they did not come towards that direction again. So I'm sure somebody took them off that. The guy who arrested, who got the police to arrest, the guy who was causing the him has come to pass. So I strongly believe they came from the Dubiasi area, came to execute 
and then quickly turned around and ran away. Uh, you're saying that you you were attacked because you uh, gave information for somebody to be arrested earlier before that? Yes, yes. And you know, when we got to Afin Breku, there was a young man that was dressed in military uniform. Right, olive green harassing. with a stint of camouflage. Exactly, harassing mm -hmm. voters in the, in the queue. So somebody drew our attention, myself and Chief Baini. So we quickly confronted him and drew the attention of the police. And so the police arrested him and we followed through to the Asin Fosu Regional Command to make sure he was detained. And then we took his statement as was also and then we left. I want to believe strongly that that is the connection to the attack on my vehicle. Are you congratulating the police because you won the election? Because that seemed to be the suggestion from some folks within the MPP that because you won, there's no attack on the police, there's no attack on the Electoral Commission, everything when, when is we okay. Lost, mm. When we lost in Kumewu, we commended the police because they did exactly what they did in our same north. We lost Kumewu. We had issues with the Electoral Commission in Kumewu because Electoral officers were forcing people to sign pin sheets even before polls opened. So we did criticism based on things that had happened and they were constructive. We praised the police in Kumeu, but we lost Kumeu. We are praising the police in Asen North because they did a professional job. If you see the amount of young men, on the side of the MPP that were deployed to polling stations across the strongholds of the NDC. And yet, the police stood their ground. For instance, in Ningo Basufi or something, mm. the voter regional police commander was the one who was in charge right. of that polling station. Right. And when we got there, we saw him drive away. Even my good self, I was asked to leave the polling station until I introduced myself to him. You understand? Right. We saw vast loads of young men being deployed to various polling stations. Mm. And it was scary. You cannot be a reporter. But for the police to take total control and not allow anybody to operate, clearly they deserve some commendation. Not because the NDC won. They did the same in Kumeu. Mm. We commended them, and the interviews are there. I see. We commended Dan Parade, his men. And we even told him in his meeting on Monday that. If what he did in Kumeu is going to do the same thing here, then we are comfortable, it will be a peaceful process. And exactly, exactly that. When the police get it wrong, we will criticize them. But if they get it right, we must praise them. All right. I see. Well, George, hold on for me. Let's uh, bring on Evans Nimako. He is the Director of Elections and Research of the New Patriotic Party. Uh, Evans, thank you very much indeed for your time. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Grateful. Me good morning to Honorable George of Ayad. Great. Now, your your party lost the Asin North by election. You were sure that they were going. You were going to win that election, having filled that. Mr. Charles Opoku, who comes from the same place with uh, Mr. Jachi Kwesin. How did that happen? Well, thank you very much, and good morning to your listeners. Uh, I must say that it's a by-election, and uh, it happens in elections. So I must first uh, congratulate all stakeholders, uh, our party, the New Patriotic Party, our political opponent, the NDC. And then the Ghana Police Service, the Electoral Commission, and you, the media, because for almost all the 99 polling stations right. were hugely covered by the media uh, as well. So, uh, and everything was, was laid there. I think that the manner in which the elections uh, was conducted shows that our democracy is, is going to another level. And so, yes, uh, we won the Kumau by election because it was our seat. The NDC has also taken the signal because we used to have uh, Mr. Jechi Kwesin as the MP. And so mm. that is where we are. I think what it tells us is that you retain your seat. And so going to 2024 elections, 
Every election has its strategy. So this is what has happened. We congratulate, congratulate the new Patriotic Party family from across the region, all our members who came to support and, and wishing everyone the best going to the future. Mm. Now, do you side with the view that this is a litmus test for 2024 and the rejection by the people of Asin North in spite of what they themselves have said, having financial inducement and all of that, uh, re still rejected you. Do you see that as a reflection of what's to happen in 2024? I'm not aware of any financial inducement. He went in, he consulted, we engaged, we presented our candidate. Our candidate has not been found by any court of law competent in, in mm. its own uh, extent mm. to have filed the law in any way. We went into this by election because uh, Mr. Jetikwesin uh, lied, filed documents that were were not proper to contest the 2020 election. It's the reason why we went into this election. I mean, for those allegations, please, I am not ready to go into those ones. But I can assure you that, uh, yes, it is by elections in national. Right. A seat that was held by the NDC, and they retain it. We had gone to Kumau, another by-election, and the new Patriotic Party won it. So I'm saying that it's retain your seat. And so I, I, I would disagree to any extent to say that it, it amounts to rejection of, of, of the new Patriotic Party. The new Patriotic Party, I can assure you, putting all the 275 constituencies together has large numbers overwhelming of course to win election 2024 so i would say let's put behind us as a not because you cannot use as not to extrapolate what will happen in, going to happen in 2024 elections in, in each own and on case by case basis has different colors all together mm. so please we have gone into the elections we congratulated all stakeholders, right. and we think that we all contribute towards the deepening of democracy in our country. Are there any lessons you have drawn from this by-election at the Synod, i.e. the way you campaigned and rallied everybody together and, and you know, speak, spoken to the people, the projects that your party said had been done, 112 or so of them, the construction of roads that were happening and, and all of that. Would you say there are lessons that you have drawn from this by-elections? Definitely. You, you, you go to every election and come with lessons learned. Uh, but what the new Patriotic Party will do to, to assess is uh, what you're going to do. After every election, the party puts together a review committee. That's all that is going to be done. And all stakeholders necessary to appear before the committee to give uh, whatever credible information available for us to put together a whole picture of it will be done. And I think at the appropriate time, what needs to be told to the world will be told. And uh, when you've gone into elections, like you've gone into war and you return, it's not everything that you see at the war front you, you bring home. Yes, you went, and I'm saying that in this year, you had two by elections. The new Patriotic Party won. By retaining the Kumau seat, the NDC has also retained the Assembly seat. The, mm, the, the statement, and I come to Mr. Parado right after this question, but the, the statement from the president trying to uh, rally all the NPP members together and telling them not to lose hope, the NPP itself has also written a statement congratulating the NDC. President congratulated the NDC. There are elements within the NDC who said there was a candidate in the election by the name of James Jachi Kwesin whose name was omitted from both statements and that speaks volumes and that you do not want to give him credit and credence. What do you say to that? Is, are they asking for too much? That his name has been omitted from where? The statements that were, I mean, we congratulate the NDC, we congratulate the NDC, but the name Jachi Kwesin was never mentioned in both uh, statements and, and some are saying that, well, why would you omit Jachi Kwesin's name? Because he's the man at the center of all of this. I mentioned that we currently all stakeholders 
mention this whole process. I mentioned the media. I didn't mention the, the, the president of DJ. I mentioned the NGC. I didn't mention uh, uh, chairman in uh, the And I mentioned the new patriotic party. And I mentioned the EC. And I mentioned the police. You, you, you see, my brother, at this point, Mm. You don't allow anybody to include certain theories. Okay. That has no basis. For us, we've been into the election. Our candidates, credible candidates, that we submitted, sponsored. Us, Charles Ufoku, no doubt about that. He met every constitutional provision, criteria required of a candidate qualified to contest elections to become a member of parliament. That we were settled in our mind, we submitted him, we went into the election. He's done a human job, and the people of Asin North know what he's made of. We went into an election, and so please, if Mr. Jechikwetin had told Ghana the truth, they wouldn't have any need for this by-election. And so we know the circumstances that led to the conduct of this by-election. And you all know. And so the fact that a statement has been issued and uh, the candidate's name is not mentioned. Is he no, is, is he no more a member of the New Patriotic Party? Is that what we are saying? I see. He's a strong man who was presented, sponsored by the party. He spent his energy in this whole enterprise. And he has done very well. And we will support him anytime the good people of Aswan North says he should be our candidate. We are Democrats. And we are saying, I mean, we've had a kite to say NDC well done. And you think we threw our own out? Is that what you are telling me? So you see that thesis has no foundation. I see. Well, George, do you have a comment uh, on this one? Yes, I do have a comment on Go this ahead, please. Let's hear you. Well, mm. the president's statement is hypocritical. And the reason why I say this is that as president of the Republic of Ghana, he should be a bit more reconciliatory, even though he made comments that were unwarranted and did not speak well of the president. Starting before the people of Asin of and saying that the situation is going to go to jail was a bit unfortunate for a lawyer who knows what the laws are and knows that he was able to prove him guilty. <laughs> to have come out with such statements was a bit unfair and unfounded. But in his statement, we had expected him to mention the situation. But he, as a member of parliament, elects for the good people of Asin North. And so, saying congratulations to the NDC and leaving out the situation. <laughs> it's just as, it's as if he has said nothing. If he did not want to say it because he could not write that equation in himself, he felt, uh, for whatever reason, I didn't think it was then necessary for him to have even issued a statement in the first place. Because that equation was the candidate of the NDC. He was the man in question. He was the man in the arena. So if the president had anything to say, he should have mentioned that equation in person. The only advice I have for the good people of Ghana is that the Supreme Court of Asimov North have spoken and the verdict is that Jati Kwesin has been re-elected as a member of parliament. I believe at this stage that Tony General should be preparing his nose and enter in only protocol and allow mm -hmm. Jati Kwesin to continue with his developmental agenda for the good people of Asimov. North. Evans Nimaku says there was no financial inducement as your party has consistently accused the um the governing party of doing uh, at the asin or by elections do you still stand by your claim that there was monetary inducement johnny there are videos of young men and women who are asin citizens who have even composed songs that charles pukusi kami You've seen videos of young men and women telling the whole world that they were given 200 Ghana cities. So it is not the Dopparad who is saying this. It is not the NDC that is alleged. There are media reports. There are media men who have pictures and videos of people giving out money on the part of the NPP. So if they say they didn't give money, if your mother is dead, then you say your mother is not dead. When the cops start smelling in the room, everybody will know. Everybody who went to our thing off, including the media, have proof. And so the NDP should give Ghanaians some credit and stop lying to people. The videos out there of the young women and old women who were saying they were giving 300 cities, were giving 200 cities, and have even composed songs telling them that after the money they have collected and spent it, but I say no, it's not Kumeu. The videos are out there. It's just a parade who has created it. So they can go ahead and see where everybody did it. After my money, it's not necessary. 
it's a state money that they bought and came to scramble there. So they can go ahead and tell everyone that they didn't bring any money. But at least the fact remains that that equation and the good people of us saying enough have over. They have overdone the Supreme Court decision by revoking mm. that equation. But they believe in him as a member of parliament. Do, do I get a sense that the... Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Evans, go ahead. Yes, Johnny. I mean, the impression should not be created as if the Supreme Court said that Mr. Jekyll cannot contest elections this, this by election. That mm. should not be the impression mm. that the community right. as much as possible. Right. We've gone into these elections, we are back. Enough of the propaganda. What is this that because the uh, Jekyll's name was not in any of the a community issue by the party, by the president, and so the education is not the one that has seen North has voted for. Is that the case? What is this issue? When I came, I mean, as in the new patriotic party, we've always been fair to all stakeholders. You saw what the posture of NDC when they lost the Kumaru by election. Mm. Today, they've won, and so every stakeholder has done so well with the exception of the new patriotic party, even when they have won. So you, you see this posture, and that's not mm. the way you want to carry Ghana's democracy. Right. Enough of this propaganda. Mm. So you, you, you Opaya, who knows the law, and you say that somebody shared money. Do the right thing. Well, George, let me ask you this. Do I get a sense from, from you and many other executives of the N NDC that the NDC feels pumped up by the victory of this election and that mm. you may misconstrue it to be an easy walk into 2024 and beyond? No politician will see any election as an easy walk into an, into, into an election. We know the 2024 election is going to be difficult, and we're going to work towards it. We are happy and excited about our thing now because if you see the kind of inducement that was brought into our thing now, uh, we were overwhelmed. But we are grateful to the good people of us. But you also shared stuff. John Boydou says you shared fertilizers and machetes and all of that. <laughs> you know, you know what MVP is good at doing. Tell me. They turn around and blame everybody for their problems. We all know who are sharing fertilizers. Do I even have access to a fertilizer to go and share? <laughs> hey, Johnny, let me leave that. All I'm saying is that. We are not going to one. We are, we are not going to take the 2024 elections for granted. Whatever we have to do to win and secure that elections, we will do it. We can't fail the good people of this country. If you look at what this government has done to this country and the state in which the economy finds itself, we need a change in direction, and that the NBC will provide. And we are going to work so hard to make sure that. We bring 2024 home. In 2024, Ghana will be green for the NDC. Mm. Uh, Mr. Nemaku, the the voices, uh, voice notes, and the sound on tape that we got for Amasin North seem to suggest that the people say they collected monies and still voted the way they wanted to vote. Would you count that as progress in a democratic process? Uh, if, if you are looking at the whole picture. I don't think we pay too much attention to this whole uh, issue because we, we had gone in as one of the stakeholders and we are doing politics and we know the posture and the attitude and the conduct of our opponents. And, and so if people put to, people together and, and come out with such videos of that sort, it probably needs to be investigated. You, you think they were put together? But, but I've not seen it. I've not cited it. Opariado is saying confidently that these are people who, who said they've taken money from MPV and still voted against us. We are saying we went into the elections as they lost in Kumeu. We also couldn't win a off. We never accused them in, 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 in Kumeu. We are not accusing them here in a off. But NBC even having retain their seats is still accusing the new patriotic party and i'm saying that this is not the way you promote our democracy and so if he's setting his mind he knows the law i mean enough of these uh, allegations george now now we're looking at growing our democracy 
And the question on the minds of everybody else is that we need a third force beyond the NDC and the NPP. Is it a good call? Um, anything that will enhance our democratic processes is a good call. So I don't have a difficulty with the third force emerging. But as to whether the third force can survive is the question you need to be asking. Mm. But if it is going to enhance our democracy, why not? Because we need to deepen it. And that is the only way to go. Changing of government through the ballot is what we've been accustomed to and we don't intend deviating from that process. So any other exercise that will strengthen that process, we are totally in support of it. Evans, what, what are your thoughts on, on that one? Yes, uh, it, it's good to have, I mean, different shades of opinion. But at the end of the day, you are looking at the superior position that will bring the change and development that will, will enhance people's lives and take most people in the vulnerable position out. And so, uh, in democracy, you cannot, I mean, uh, pursue any agenda that will, will trample upon people's interests. And so, why not? But for us as New Patriotic Party, we are a national party, we cut across. We will continue to propagate our principles and philosophies and get people uh, buy-in for us to really get the new patriotic party to bring the the agenda uh, that is uh, anchored on development. The, the NDC have said after this, um, their victory at Asin North, that, for example, they are done with choosing a presidential candidate. Largely, they are done with their internal elections and also choosing uh, mo most of their parliamentary candidates, save a few constituencies that are outstanding. And then that they are ready for 2020, uh, 2024. You, on the other hand, is yet to decide which of the 10 individuals uh, who have put themselves up for the presidency or the presidential um, flag bearership slot, I beg your pardon, of your party, uh, who leads, and then also to decide who represents each constituency on the ticket of your party. So that will be a tall order for you. And that could bring cracks within your party and make way for an easy win for the NDC. What do you say to that as Director of Elections and Research? Thank you. And uh, as long as the NDC leads, you cannot take some of these things from them. But I can also assure you that there will be no cracks in the new Patriotic Party post our internal election. And let me tell them, first in court doesn't mean that you're going to get ruling in your favor. Mm. So the fact that you've elected your flag bearer, you've selected your parliamentary candidate, doesn't mean that the election 2024 is going to be a done deal for you. My brother, mm. the fact of it is that Mr. Mahama, when he was the president in 2016, we beat him. We beat him with figures we've never seen in our electoral history. Mm. And the records are there to show. In opposition in 2020, we beat him. And I can assure you that we've always known Mr. Mahama. So we are going to beat him again in 2024. It's no doubt. I will leave it here, but I can assure you that the NDC can continue to tickle themselves and laugh. But I'm saying that the fact that you are first to go to court doesn't mean that you get ruling in your favor. Because if we take the new patriotic party, the NDC, on a balance sheet, they are no match. Well, there's a member of your party's communication team that is suggesting that the current crop of executives are indisciplined. And that's what caused the defeat in, uh, what do you call it, Asin North. And that could largely also affect the party's chances in 2024. Do you agree with that assertion? My brother, uh, Mr. Opayado is there. Between him and Mr. Sami Jensi, the kind of engagement they had ahead of their national officer selection will tell you that sometimes in the political party there can be some internal issues. But I would disagree with this person. I don't know who this person is, and you've not mentioned the name. Mm. And so I wouldn't want to pursue the discussion with you. I see. George, now, you, Evan says your claim that 
you are done and dusted and that you're ready for 2024, <laughs> maybe you have to relook at it again because for as long as uh, you live, your party lives, they will not take some of these things from you. Clearly demonstrating that they have a, an upper hand over you when it comes to elections in this country, learning from 2016. What's your opinion? We beat them in 2008. We beat Candidate Akufa in 2012. So if Candidate Akufa wins in 2016, and he wins in 2020, it is no news. We've had eight elections in this country. The MPP have won four, the NDG have won four. In 2024, John Ramani Mahama will be elected the president of the Republic of Ghana. We are done. We are waiting for them. Whoever they elect as their flag bearer, that person will still lose in 2024. We are ready and we are poised for victory. Won't you lose steam while waiting? No, we won't. <laughs> we won't lose any steam. We are more than eager to change the fortunes of this country. Evans, you have the final word on this one as we wrap up this conversation. Where do we go from here? I say not is done. Um, what are we looking at for your party going into the future? Well, thank you. Uh, as you said, uh, they will definitely lose things. The little that will be left, they will see it in, in, in 2024, general election. We are yet to conduct our internal primary. We put the timelines out. Monday to Thursday will be vetting of the bold prospective presidential hopeful. Then 11th we open of our constituency nomination. And then in December we will open certain members of parliament nomination. We will have possibly a uh, special electoral college on 26th of August. And then on November 4, 2023, we do the elections that will elect our new presidential candidate. Mm. The new Petrotic Party is certain that our base is solid. Constituency from number one to 275 are all ready to back the national officers and officers across polling stations, electoral coordinators, constituency executives, as well as the regional executives to conduct a process that the whole Ghana will see that this is the new patriotic party ready to go into election 2024 and come out again retaining the seat as in president and winning overwhelming majority in parliament to support government business to ensure development for the good people of Ghana. We are ready to do this and we know the battle being the law, the new patriotic party will come out with flying colors. George, finally. I wish them well in their internal processes. I just hope and pray that it shall be peaceful as ours was. And then they give us somebody who we can defeat and defeat very well in 2024. Look at you. I, I don't understand you. How do you mean? <laughs> I'm just hoping mm. that their processes become peaceful. Okay. That is in August August 26th, so when they're going in like their flag bearer. Mm. And they elect somebody who comes and the NDC will defeat in 2020. I see. Thank you very much indeed for your time. George Opariado, he is a, a lawyer, is also the national youth organizer of the NDC. And um, Evans Nimaku, he is uh, director of elections and research of the new patriotic party. Mm. Sunrise.